Hey, what's going on? In this video, I'm gonna be giving you some tips if you're a beginner wildlife photographer. It's something you wanna get into. Maybe you don't have much experience doing it yet. You're not really sure where to start. So hopefully these tips will help you out. My first tip is the location is very important try to go somewhere where you're likely to see a lot of wildlife like somewhere where i am now it's like a public park um there's you can probably hear there's wildlife all around and it's fairly used to people being here as well and um at least when you're starting out this is a great way to see lots of different types of animals there are birds here there are squirrels there are deer loads of things you can see so um yeah so that's my number one tip go to a location where there's lots of wildlife, like a public park, maybe a nature reserve, something like that. All right, so for my next tip, you want to bring your longest lens. I would recommend if you're on a crop sensor camera, you need at least 200, preferably 300 millimeters. This kind of ties into the first tip in that if you're in a public place where the animals are quite used to people, you'll be able to get much closer than you normally would, especially like here in the south of Britain, things like robins will fly right up to you. So you should be okay with a 200 millimeter lens in those situations, but I would recommend 300 millimeter generally as a minimum. And if you're on full frame, you'll need even longer, like at least four or 500 millimeters I'd recommend. I'm using a 500 millimeter lens on my full frame D850. And I find this great for all different types of wildlife. Okay, so my next tip, this one's a big one. So don't use a camera bag when you're walking around in your location you know obviously pack your camera away in a camera bag when you're transporting it to and from a location but when you get there take it out have it ready take the lens cap off i just keep my lens hood on like this and i use a sling strap so that i can just have it um, leaning down at my side and then when i'm walking around i can just whip up my camera at a moment's notice and get a shot you don't want to be fumbling around trying to change lenses or take things out of your camera bag while there's wildlife, you know, potentially about to run away from you. For me, this is a big one because it's going to save you a lot of frustration. So yeah, just make sure that your camera is out and ready. If you don't have one of these straps, I'd highly recommend them. I'll put a link in the description if you want to check this one out. All right, so my next tip, this is also a big one, is just to get low down to the ground lay down if you can um, this is especially important with small animals that are on the ground in this case i'm at a pond and there are these lovely mandarin ducks swimming around and i i'm at a place where i can get right down to the water's edge and get as low as possible and i'll show you the difference of if you just kneel or stand up and take a picture down at the birds or if you're actually completely laying down you'll see the difference. It, it blurs the background out so much more. The whole picture has a much more ethereal, pleasing look. Uh, so yeah, this is one of my biggest tips. Just get low. I think your pictures will really stand out because of it. So one of the problems with this position, when you're holding the camera that low to the ground, you kind of have to crane your neck into an awkward position to look through the viewfinder. You can see Sue here is solving that problem by using a right angle viewfinder that allows you to shoot in this position more comfortably and it'll really save your neck. So I would highly recommend one of these. I'll put a link in the description. Um, yeah, pick one up. All right, so for my next tip, think about your background and try to improve it as you get shots. So for example, if you have a bird in a tree, don't just photograph through the tree to the sky behind the bird. Usually the sky will be too white and it will look blown out. So what I would recommend is try and move around a bit, step side to side, try and get something dark behind your subject if possible. Or if you're photographing mammals, try and get some dark trees or bushes behind them and uh, that'll make them pop out from the background a lot more and this is huge because the more distracting and cluttered your background or the more bright your background the worse the subject will look and the less it will stand out in the photo okay so the next tip is try to focus on the eye of your subject as much as possible I'm not going to get too much into camera settings in this video, but I'd recommend using the single point AF if your subject is still or if it's moving slowly. And just try and focus on the eye. 
when the eye is sharp, it makes the picture so much more engaging because that's the part that your eye should go to first when you look at the picture. You want the eye to be pin sharp. Okay, so my next tip is to shoot in RAW. You probably start out shooting in JPEG and that's fine. If you're not too sure about RAW, I'd suggest shooting in RAW plus JPEG. That will allow you to preserve the, the RAW files at least, even if you just use the JPEGs at first. And the reason you should shoot in RAW is because the RAW files give you so much more room to play with the image and process it in post. Um, use a program like Lightroom or one of the other RAW processors to really bring the most out of the image. You'll be able to change the exposure, bring highlights down that are too bright, bring up shadows that are too dark. It really is quite powerful. Um, so yeah, definitely try to hold on to those RAW files even if you're not using them straight away. But yeah, that's definitely a big tip for beginners, shoot RAW. Okay, so my next tip, gonna get into camera settings a little bit, but not too much. But just make sure your shutter speed is high enough. Um, you wanna avoid motion blur, and you want to be adjusting your shutter speed to get an idea of what works in different situations. I would suggest shutter priority with auto ISO, that lets you adjust your shutter speed, or manual mode with auto ISO, that will let, that will let you adjust your aperture and shutter speed. Um, it depends a bit on what type of camera you have. Some work better with just shutter priority when you just have one dial on the back. Uh, but, but some cameras have two dials, so they work fine with manual mode and auto ISO. But yeah, just make sure you can control your shutter speed and that you're not getting blur in your images. Okay, and that brings us to my final tip, which is to just enjoy being out. Not every time you go out, you're necessarily going to see wildlife. And even if you do, the pictures might not be amazing every time. So just make sure that you just enjoy being outdoors. So that means dress appropriately, make sure you keep warm. If it's sunny, wear sunscreen. If there are bugs, wear a uh, bug repellent, mosquito repellent. And yeah, you can't really go wrong. If you just enjoy being outside, just kind of have your camera casually with you, um, like I do here on the sling strap. And then if the wildlife shows up, you can get the shots. If not, at least you still had a nice day. And yeah, that should be enough tips to get you started. I'll be releasing some more advanced videos about how to photograph different types of species like water birds and deer and perching birds and birds of prey, mammals, foxes. So please subscribe to make sure you see my other videos. And thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.